Hello YouTube. Um okay, I shot this like twice already, but have a little bit of chaos. Anyway, um I'm going to start be starting a new uh, video tutorial series on Arch Linux. First of all, it's gonna be getting it up and running, just getting the bare minimum installed, which is what it installs anyway. Like the bare, bare minimum. It doesn't even install sudo. But the, there's an upside to this because yes it's a little more work, but you only install what you need. Um, and it's base, it's basically, you know, stock, stock Linux. Ubuntu server had a bunch of customizations. And um anyway, I do, you download it from archlinux.org. And I'm doing the 64 bit net install version, which means it doesn't have the package on the disk. I'm have it connected to the internet with an Ethernet cable. Which is what you're going to need to do to do it this way. And yes, you install wireless, do the wireless, but it's much more of a hassle. It's a lot easier to just plug in an Ethernet cable. Uh, anyway, let's get started. It's going to boot up, and I'm going to be doing you know all of it, you know, including installing the GUI in a virtual machine. But after that, I'm going to do try and get a couple more tutorials out from my machine, where you know with Arch Linux, and it'll basically be following this tutorial. Except I won't have the public password and stuff. It'll be a different password. So now you type in root here, and it tells you all that stuff. It's really nice at walking you through it. It might seem a little intimidating, but it's not that bad. So here you log in with root, no password. Then you you type arch or slash arch, forward slash arch forward slash setup. Or that backslash? I can never keep those straight. I think that's a forward slash. So then you get this. Yada yada yada. So first you select the source, this is the net install, so you hit this, otherwise it blows up in your face. I'm going to do setup network. I'm just doing this with the enter key actually, because I don't really need to change anything yet. Network is configured. Do do Choose the mirror, ftp.archlinks.org is throttled. I'm going to do if there's anything in here that I recognize. I'm oh, surprised Calvin is in here. Well, if you're in the US, do something to .com.org. Don't do .au. I think that's Australia? What's the .on? Yeah, whatever. Anyway. Uh, Mirrors.kernel.org is the first one on my list. Okay, so we've chosen a mirror. So now we return to the menu. Set the clock. Now I'm going to assume that you're doing, you know, blank hard drives. So you don't have to worry about dual booting or any of that. And America, and then time zone would be Detroit for me. That's Eastern Standard Time. Okay, and then UTC. Yes, it's already working. Looks good. All right. Now here's a little bit of tricky. You gotta. Prepare the hard drive. I'm not going to do auto repair or prepare because that sets up some extra partitions and that kind of fixes the size of the app, my applications you install. Um, if you actually jailbroke, you know, the app I touched in the 1.1 days, 1.1.1 something days, uh, you would know that the applications, there are two partitions. There's the system partition and the media partition. System one was like 300 meg, so you can only install 300 meg worth of applications minus what the OS already took up. Uh, I mean, there was a way you could do a sim link, but base, yeah, anyway. So manually partition the hard drives. I'm just going to have two partitions the swap partition, which is like the page file for Linux or Windows people, then dev slash SDA. Right. So new primary. And you can't go in and delete them. You can just type in what you want. I know it's a little confusing. And I'm gonna do eighty thousand because actually no I'm not. Yeah I am. Gosh, I wish I could keep okay. Beginning. Then you hit T to go to type. You can also use the left and right arrows to navigate the options there. Um no. We want eighty three where it says Linux. So we're pressing the key to continue. We're typing 83. Again, you can't delete the characters. 
that kind of just kicks you out. So you have to just type it in and auto overwrite. Like if you hit the insert key in Word. And then, first of all, yes, we want to make this bootable. Then we're also going to create another partition for the swap primary, and we're going to just make it 5,000 because. You know what? And then we're we'll almost to that in the end. This is an extra space in the middle. Then using left to right arrows to navigate these, go to right. And then you type in yes, Y E S, and then you hit enter. And then you hit Q to exit, or you could just you know use the arrow keys. And then yeah. Okay. And then let's just make sure I remember it real quick. Yes it did. So Q. Then we're gonna go done. And manual configure block devices. We're gonna do the first slash dev. Okay, so we have two. Slash dev SDA one slash dev slash SDA one anyway. And slash which it should be the large once, then you click yes if it asks that about the file, you want to recreate the file system. Choose ext4 and you want it as root. No options, no options. Right? And then dev it. Slash sda2. These are sub partitions on the drive, which is sda. If that makes sense? So sda1 is the first partition, sda2 is the second partition. And see it? That's what it said on the last one. I kind of skipped by it really fast. Then this one you choose swap. You know, just no, and then you uh, extra options. You see no yada yada yada. Done. And it's going to say no separate boot file system. Kind of explained it with the old iPod Touch jailbreaking type stuff. So just click ignore. Well, not click it. But move down. And then it's going to do this. And if it takes too long, I'll just cut it out. Yeah, if there are any long processes, I'll just end up cutting them out. All right, I'm going to just stop this and get back to you when it's done. Or maybe not. Oh, what the hell, I'll just cut this one out later if I have to. All right, now it's making the swap. So, see? Really quick, partition successfully created. And I'm going to put the focus back on VirtualBox. Okay. Then you return to the main menu. You select the packages. It's going to refresh the package database. Package selection is to first. Okay, there are two groups base, base develop. Do not, you know, development type stuff. So then we want to go base. So we just hit enter. Then these are all the ones that are installed there. Man pages, which are manuals. Okay. Now, if you want to have wireless setup on them, you know, they're done. There's something down here. All the way down at the bottom. Kind of like the little percentage thing that shows how far you are down the list. That's kind of cool. It's wireless tools. I don't know if you need any of the other stuff, but so I've said in this excellent life hacker article. I'm going to put a link to that in the beginning of the video and in the video description. Alright, so I select the packages, and install the packages, and I'm going to stop, you know, because this is going to take a while. So I'm going to install package installation now. Okay. Then I hit OK, and I want to stop the recording, and I will re resume it when it finishes. Okay, it's uh, finished downloading and now it's going to install. And I just want to give you an update. Now I'm going to pause and resume when it's done again. Okay, and it's done installing, I think. Let's just go through the log real quick. Installing, installing, installing. Alright, looks okay. Yada yada yada, looks, still looks okay. Alright, continue. Generating whatever that means. All right, so we've done that. Now we got to do configuration. Yes, we're just going to automatically import those because it's easy. All right now we're going to do nano, 
I hate VI. Some people love it. Okay, now this is, and I'm going to exit. All right. Slash etc slash rc.com for clnf. Okay, now we're going to scroll down to networking. Now, host name equals my host. I'm going to call this host name equals screencast. If I can type. There we go. Now you hit control X to quit. And then it's going to ask you if you want to save the modified buffer. You want to hit Y. Then just hit enter. File system mount, mount points, yada yada. That's all. Should be all fine. Um, okay, hosts. All right. Yada yada yada. Okay. Now this one. All right. I'm gonna go. You know your country, and then uncomment a couple of the the uh, mirrors in the United States. Okay. I'm gonna do the official one just because. Yes, that one's throttled, but and then I'll also do. MTU here and here. And we'll do the one on the top too. So you uncomment a couple of those. You don't want to do one because if you know files missing on one, it should all work. Okay, now here you want to make sure ENUS is checked. I might hit space, but that doesn't matter. Okay, I skipped it. Yep, those are uncommented right there. Okay, so hit control X to K, and then there's one thing I think I need to do, and I can't remember what it is. Um. I'm gonna pause the recording and get back. Okay, I remember. I just want to uh, enable the multi-lib or library um, repository. So uh, since this is 64-bit, that'll allow it to be able to install 32-bit stuff. So we go back to Pacman, which is the package man. You know, yeah, manager. You know, you have apt in Ubuntu. So yada yada yada, and then repositories. Testing core extra community testing community multi lib and okay so it does so you want to uncomment this line and the line below it yes and hit enter you know control X exit Y and then enter okay and then you set the root password I'm just going to do Green cast and then type in again. And then we're all right. We finished installing and it is going to do some important stuff and then it's going to oops, sorry about that. I'll just stop the recording and get back to you when it is done. Sorry, I forgot there's one more step. You just gotta install the bootloader. I'm gonna use grub and yada yada yada. Yes, that configuration file is fine. Control X. And then what's the difference here? Um just do the first one. And it's successfully installed. I'm gonna do exit install. And here, and then you type in reboot to reboot. And then it's going to boot up into a terminal and see there's the virtual box styles type thing and that is the disk so if we do boot existing OS it's going to see and then grub is working and thanks for watching part one of oh I was about to say let's play uh, Arch Linux but this is not a video game so uh, thanks for watching part one of my Arch Linux tutorials. Let's just call it that. Part two, we're going to start installing, getting ready to install XORG and GNOME. 
thank you very much for watching.